Hi, I'm Wes Lane with CED. Um, first of all, I want to start off today with something cool that we've done for a customer lately. Uh, we have a customer that uh, industrial MRO who uses an industrial contractor of ours, and the industrial contractor had to install a 250 horsepower soft start. Um, you may say that a soft start is pretty simple. You just get it up to speed slowly, but there is a lot of uh, capabilities of a soft start, and especially in this one, it was a pumping soft start, so it actually has its own pumping algorithm and pumping firmware in it. This customer is pretty familiar, pretty high tech, but they wanted a little bit of help, so we volunteered to have myself and our tech consultant, our industrial control specialist, go to the job site, which happened to be outdoors, 12 degree weather with 10 mile an hour winds, and we uh, helped them out by hooking up software to the soft start. We double checked their wiring while they were checking the motor was coupled correctly and the pump was all set up correctly. We probably saved them one or two man hours. They had two guys on the site and they bill about $65 an hour. So we're talking about anywhere from $130 to $260 in their labor savings. And also happiness savings. They were happy that somebody was out there helping them in such cold weather. And we got their customer up and going, made them look really professional, and had a happy customer well quicker than what the customer thought. So, did you stop it as that, or are we just going to keep on going? Okay. Um, this week we talk about electrical basics. So, kind of starting with the bread and butter of our industry. What's voltage? What's current? What's current? Um, preparing people for when a customer calls and says, I've got this, or I need this, we kind of understand the background information of what they're asking about. So, um, starting with kind of one of the more simple things that our customers are going to know really well, and I expect us to know really well also, is voltage in the different systems that are out there available. So we have really, what I'd say in the United States, three main systems you normally hear about the most popular system. You've got your 120 volt slash 240 volt single phase, 120, 208, three phase, and 480, 277 volt three phase. Um, so starting off, the most simple of all is the single phase. I consider it the most simple of all. The cool part about it is when it says 120, 240, um, L1 to ground is 120. And then with the single phase system, L1 to L2 is L1 plus L2 equals 240. So like I said, easiest to remember, um, if you have a single pole breaker on there, that's 120 volts. If you need to get 240 volts off of your system, you'll have a breaker that, that touches both legs, and that becomes a 240 volt two pole breaker. Um, and by the way, I've got these bars showing L1, L2, L3. I've kind of drawn it, drawn it just like you'd see it in a panel board or a load center. That's the way the power normally flows into a facility when you, when you think about your breaker panel. Uh, you normally have three bus bars in there and you take power from your, each of your different bars. So next one, a 120, 208, three volt, three phase system. L1 to ground, kind of giving away the smallest voltage on there. 120 again. So a single pole breaker is 120 volts. Where you start getting tricky is L1 to L2. You would think that it'd be 240 volts but it's not. It's a 208 volt. And this is still what we kind of consider single phase, or some people call it dual phase, double phase. It's not a three phase. You can't run a three phase motor directly off of that. But you can use that 208 volts to power something that needs anywhere from the 200 to 215 volt range. Sometimes you have industrial dryers or washing machines, um, if you're 
needing to go from um, 208 volts down to 24 volts, you may use that single phase power to power a transformer. Um, and then when it comes to three phase, so if you're putting your electrical multimeter on L1 and L2, you're going to get 208 volts across all three phases. So if you have a three phase system and you have a three pole breaker, it'll be three pole, 208 volts. Lastly, a 480 volt three phase system, probably our most popular when it comes to motors and a lot of our industrials because you're getting um, a little bit more capacity out of your system, smaller breakers. Um, L1 to ground, again the smallest number in our, our system, 277. So a single pole breaker is 277. Uh, we do have single pole 277 breakers most commonly used in lighting. So if you have a facility that you have a bunch of three phase 480 volt panels in it, you can run a 277 volt circuit with one wire for your hot, one wire for your neutral or ground, and get your power to your ballasts, or now LED drivers. Um, if you put your multimeter leads from L1 to L2, you get 480 volt, also single phase. Um, the 480 volt single phase, a two pole breaker for 480 volt is most common also in lighting, say you have parking lot lighting and you have to run hundreds or sometimes a thousand feet of wire, 480 volt, if you have a 10% voltage drop, drops you down to 440, 430 maybe, and that's normally still in your um, tolerance for your ballast or LED drivers. So you're running a lot longer distance with smaller cable um, with less voltage drop. Also 480 volt single phase is most common in our control transformers because you're taking uh, L1 to L2 from that 480 volt and you're normally stepping it down to 240 slash 120 over here single phase so you have 120 volts available in your control pan. And then finally all three phases together 480 volt that's three phase and that's the best, most efficient way to run motors um, and provides, that's probably the most common thing that we're going to see in the industrial world. So the next thing is, I guess we wanted to talk about how to find volts, amps, or watts with the unknown. I'm going to need you to have your calculator out on this one, please. Um, so let's think about a single phase system. A customer calls up and says, I've got, I need, I've got a 1200 watt system and I know I'm going to run it at 120 volts. What kind of amperage do I need on that? Because you need to know what kind of current you need to protect for. So our um, equation is watts. I would say kind of equals volts times amps because technically power factors should be involved as well but I'm going to ignore that and for the most part when we're getting kind of close with this we're going to ignore power factor unless the customer says I've got a really bad power factor of 0.8 or 0.7. Most of the time we can get close enough with this and at least give some kind of I don't know good intelligence to our customer. So 1200 watts we know VA means volts, volt amps, volts times amps so our equation here should be how many amps? 10. 10 amps. All right, so similar situation. We got a customer who says, I need a transformer for 100 amps at 120 volts. So how many VA or how many watts is that transformer? It's uh, 12,000. 12,000 watts. And remind, remember, this is still talking single phase this whole time. 
Okay, and last but not least, we have somebody who says, I've got a 300 watt transformer. Um, I know it's protected or it's, it's putting out about 2.5 amps. How many volts is that transformer running at? 120. So we're at 120 volt transformer. So single phase, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Most of the people got that right pretty easily on the pretest. Now when it came to three phase calculations, that's where we had the little kicker in there. Everybody tried to just use this part of the equation and didn't realize that we have to use the square root of three as well when we're talking about three phase systems. Um, so, say you have a 2500 watt transformer that's at 480 volt, how many amps? I'm getting there. <laughs> and if you don't put the 1.73 on there, I'm pretty sure that's around the five point something range. That was the incorrect answer. Let's say it's uh, 3.01. 3.01 amps. So that 1.73 made a big difference between a 5 amp system and a 3 amp system. And especially if you add another digit or on here, a 30 amp system versus a 50 amp system becomes even more important to have that 1.73 and have it right. Um, and then another one real quick, customer calls up, says, I've got a 60 amp, I need a 60 amp system at 480 volts. How many watts is he going to have available? Let's say that's uh, 49,824. So there we have it. There's the basics of how to find voltage, amps, or watts from the unknown. How long was that?